Some of us have tuned in on the stream, so welcome to those of you who gather with us. You're noticing that we're a little late. Um, part of it is that it's so overcast. I think we think it's earlier in the morning. So we, the Sunday school group must have been the last. They're just getting over here. All right. I'm going to roll with announcements. And um, Rose, do you have anything you want for us to know about this morning? Um, I can't get through to Bob Evans. They keep sending me around in circles. So if anybody has any connections at Carter's or Bob Evans so that we can get paperbacks in bulk, that would be great. Um, I'm, I'm not making any more phone calls to Bob Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. They beat me. Um, then there are a couple places in here we need to fill. We've got one place on the serving line, one place in cleanup crew, uh, actually two places in the serving line. And then I think we need to get a few more uh, dessert sign-ups if we can. So I think probably everybody that's here can sign up, but I will pass it around one more time. Sometimes, well, those dessert ladies know we'll just get drop off the up. day of. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Any um, any announcements we want to make about Rally Day and Sunday School coming up? Is it on? It looks ready. Uh, Rally Day will start next Sunday, and, and it'll be over in the Fellowship Hall. We will be all together, and it will start at 9.30. Um, so everybody is invited. Hope you come. We'll have some food and just some fellowship. Um, so it would be nice to get together and kick off the beginning of our Sunday school, and then worship changes the time to 10.30 then, so come to church at 10.30. Correct. And repeat that to each other all through the week. <laughs> so, um, I have some family members that are looking forward to it being 10.30. <laughs> Drag their little selves in. All right. Um, for our Sunday school year, we're going to have those second Sundays beginning in October. And this year's theme is about stewardship. And our resources are coming from a place called the Generosity Project. So we're working on growing our generosity as one of our faith practices. So um, we're looking forward to that as a follow-up on the year of discipleship. And um, so this will be a good year together. Keep in mind that Mutual Ministry meets this Tuesday night at 7. And if you're part of that group, you want to be making sure we're here. And um, so that's on our schedule. And there was something else. Um, I'm going to go on with any birthdays in this crowd. All right, then let's gather our prayers that we want to. Um, Pastor Marty continues to need our prayers as he's going to be moving into cardiac rehab, so I want to keep him on that list. Barbara Kreitz is doing some recovery work at home, and um, she needs our prayers, continued prayers. And then, um, Ann Scully, and she's in the hospital for her. Yeah, okay. She's hopefully gonna get released in the next couple days. And that's your mom's sister. Right, correct. Right. Okay. So, um, and then Debbie Hoffine, just very quickly, went and got a knee replaced this week. She's doing fine and is back at home, but she does want our prayers as she works, um, integrates that new knee into her whole system. So, um, writing these down, I had them further back. Um, we also got a request um, that we, we've had Mark Hoffman before in our list and we've had a request that we bring his need for prayer in front of us again so he's been put on that list and um i don't want to forget who else 
All right, Darlene and Darlene um, Strasser, Elizabeth Darlene Strasser. I didn't know she was Elizabeth till I had to say that name to get information on her. <laughs> <laughs> so please tell me your first name if you have some first name you don't go by. It really helps. Um, but Darlene is in need of prayer. Her family's in need of prayer. And it has been a long go for her. And um, so anybody else or anyone you know I'm forgetting, I see. Today's Darlene's birthday. Today is Darlene's birthday. And um that's, that's, she's going to be 90, so she, she's got to be there, and that's not an easy place to be. All right, um, any others that you have? Do we have Ms. D on the third list? Oh, thank you, yeah. Ms. D. Ms. D had quite a fall this week and managed to break her collarbone and she's recovering from that at home and um, she had some other bumps and bruises but when you see how she fell and where she fell um, she kind of had angels there it's pretty clear that her injuries could have been way worse um, but she that is what she came away with she needs our prayers, though, because she's also one of the 90-somethings. I say the 90-somethings are all having exciting things happen <laughs> this week. So, um, D. D. Oh, D. Yeah. 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 So, all right. You all are very quiet today. We have... Um, interesting um, pieces of worship today of course we celebrate holy communion together and that is always a it's a gift from jesus for all of us this day so i hope you come with great expectancy in your heart for that and then we also are installing our sunday school teachers today it was difficult for them to all be together except for this day so we've got all of us here pretty sure we have all of us here. And um, the other thing that's part of my message is we are going to bless the laboring hands. And I'll lead you through parts of that. So, so those are part of the elements today. It's all about how um, we are useful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, we hear a little bit about Onesimus, whose, mean, whose name does mean useful. So, um, we will, did, does that match with what you guys researched this week? Yeah. <laughs> so, so fun. All right. We are going to, because we have communion today, after the prelude, be ready for the confession and forgiveness that's printed in your bulletin. So let's listen to our prelude first. rise for our confession and forgiveness. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to um, talk about that journey as we sing these lyrics, Oh Master, let me walk with you. And that's number 492 in this green hymnal. And um, we're doing all the verses or it's printed there in your digital bulletin. <laughs> Amen. 
direct us, O Lord God, in all our doings with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to listen to our scripture lessons being read for us. Good morning. Good morning. First reading is from Deuteronomy 15 through 30. See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. If you obey my commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his ordinance, then you shall live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you and you in the land which, you're, which you are entering to take position of it. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but you are drowned away to worship other gods and serve them, I do to you this day that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land in which you are going over, and the Jordan in which the Jordan in which to enter and prosper. I I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and clear, cleaving to him. For that makes life to you the length of the days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swears to your father, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to get this is the first reading. We'll continue with the first psalm today. That is our psalm we will be reading. It's on page 215 in the front of your green hymnal. We're reading it responsively by verses. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, sat in the seats of the scorn. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Continue with our second reading. The second lesson is from Philemon. I don't know which chapter. It just says there's, there's one, one chapter. There's one chapter. And one. there's one chapter. There I had bulletin, so I didn't look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker. To Athia, our sister. To Archippus, our fellow soldier. And to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in prayers, I always thank my God, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. 
I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, who do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I am appealing to you for our child, Onesimus, whose father I've become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent, in order that your deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Therefore, this is the reason he was separated you from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So, if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay you. I say nothing about your owing me even your own life. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you knowing that you will do more than I can say. This ends the second reading. Please stand for the gospel. Mm -hmm. children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able, with 10,000, to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then... While the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So, therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. I am looking for what I wanted to, oh, it's already up here. All right, I don't think I have too many young people. But go, come on up anyways. I was with people yesterday that I need to protect you. We're putting that on. All right. Okay. Um, I brought something with me. Anything that you would say this is? Mail. Any other words for that that we can think of? 
A letter? Yeah, this is a letter. So it did come through that delivery system called the mail. Yeah. And have any of you, this one's all typed and everything, isn't it? Have any of you taken a pencil, and I had one, and paper, and written on that paper, and then put it in an envelope and sent it off? You've done that. Awesome. Because some people never have. Um, and you are starting to be rare. I bet you the people out here have done that, put something in and wrote and then sent it off. Now, um, one of the things, I'm getting my pencil. One of the things that we heard, or one of the lessons we heard about today, in fact, it was Miss Donna who read it. Um, some of you, she's grandma, okay. She read that one. Did you know that at one time that was a letter that someone had put on a piece of paper and had, had been delivered or a piece of whatever, papyrus or whatever, and had been delivered, all right? And so all that she read at one time was on a piece of paper or just a thing that big. Yeah, thing that big. Now, why do you think, do you, I don't know about you, but do you guys, what do you do with pieces of paper like this over time? You burn them? What else do you do? Do we save them very much? No, we don't. We don't sometimes. But how, how did Donna read it to us if this letter was written like 2,000 years ago. Not exactly, don't quote me on the exact years. I'm used to working with some people who are like, no, that's not right. All right, so how, how, did you, how do you think that letter written so long ago made it to Miss Donna to read today? People kept copying it. Huh. Or did they maybe save it? They maybe saved it? Well, isn't that cool that sometimes the early Christians would say, hey, this letter from so-and-so to so-and-so has such good news in it that we should save it. And then when it was time to make books about what it means to be a Christian, they, they put it in, and they printed it. The letter went into this, this book right here. And what's that book? Bible. So isn't that cool that we learn about what it means to be followers of Jesus by letters that get sent, messages that are given? Now, who do you think are some of the best letters that are getting sent out about Jesus right now? I gave you a hint because I said who. Not one. Yes, you might be a letter that's telling who Jesus is or what it's like to be a Christian. You might be a letter that somebody is looking at, and getting to know, and finding out. You might be what's called the li a living letter. A living letter. Because some of the stories we find in here about people, and you learn about them at Sunday school. And someone wrote down their story, so they were living letters telling us about God and God's love. Okay, so I want you to think about that, and let's pray about that. Dear Jesus, help all of us to carry your message and to be living letters for you. Amen. Um, all right, you guys can head on back.
a lady here. Now it's so nice, Donna, how you set us up. <laughs> I always think those are God things. Okay. All right, let's let's you, will you please pray with me. Dear Jesus, help us all, whatever our age, to be your living letters. Use us to tell your story. Use us to share your love. Use us to show forgiveness. Use us to do your work in a hurting world. I ask that um, you would teach us to use all ourselves and all of who we are to be your living letter. Be with me as I lead us through study and contemplation and blessing today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Here's some. <laughs> okay, here's a little poem. Why is it that people always shake hands when they meet on the street? Why is it shaking their noses or ears the proper way to greet? Why do people shake and nod their heads for yes and no? And why not wiggle their belly buttons or tickle their own toe? Why do people raise their hands when they want to give an answer? Why not shout or spit or pout or spin round like a dancer? Where did people learn these rituals? In Iceland or Hong Kong? Who was the first to try them out? And how did they catch on? Well, it's time for me to go, so it's time to wave goodbye. My hand is wobbling in the air, but I'm still not quite sure why. That's a silly poem about how our bodies become these useful ways to communicate. Um, it was written by Arthur Davidson. So I'm going to give him credit. It did sound a little bit like Dr. Seuss. Um, we talked as you all have, were there, about um, being letters and the importance of that in the world of the early Christians and how being able to communicate, being able to um, share that story was, was very important. And that whole endeavor still continues. Um, it's interesting in that second letter we heard, or in that letter we heard about um, Onesimus, which I already told you, whose name means useful. And um, Paul, just a wonderful writer, used wordplay to lighten up a very serious request he was making. Because in verse 11, Paul described his friend Onesimus as formerly useless to you, but now he is full of use, both to you and to me. And then he concludes and tells us what that usefulness is. Onesimus in his time with Paul has become a disciple of Christ. And now Onesimus was full of use. He had found his true self, his usefulness, set free by the cross of Jesus. And did it make sense, Paul says, that he continue as a slave whose sole purpose was to serve Philemon? Or should Onesimus be most useful as a servant of Christ? Paul says, think that through. And you make that choice. He's very loving. Now, it's Labor Day weekend, and we celebrate 
that as people, we have work, we have labor, we produce, and then as Christians, we go deeper and we consider our work as Christians, our work we do every day, our work in our families in the light of Christ. Whether we are like Onesimus, we heard of, or Philemon, or Athia, or Archippus, or Paul. So we're going to focus on our hands today, some to serve as a reminder of our usefulness to the message of Jesus Christ. Now, as I looked at hands and was readying for us to talk about hands, I read 20 poems about the beauty of hands and the elegance of hands and the touch of hands until I got to a three-line poem that was about the usefulness of hands. And it was written by Ellen Palmer Allerton. It's Those That Do is the title. Beautiful hands are those that do. Work that is earnest, brave, and true. Moment by moment, a long day through. So that's why we're going to bless working hands today. It reminds us when we bless our hands that we have earnest and brave and true work we do when we are useful, useful to Christ and to his work in our community. So I want you to get ready a bit. We um, have some large gaps between people. So we have to get ready by moving Cindy closer to her sister. <laughs> it sounds funny now, doesn't it? Let's move them closer to him. And then Lori, you're going to be kind of part of that group, and I'm going to put, um, and if you're with, you guys are a little pair there, and then there's a, a group there. And Ellen, you and Don might need to be a little, because there's a point where we're going to put the hand, I mean, we're going to put the cross of Jesus on each other's hands. So, Michael, you move up with this Kennedy family. Okay. And, all right. So, Ellen, yeah, come on up a little bit. And then I know this family will figure that out. And you guys, okay. All right. Um, I'm going to share a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are varieties of gifts of the same spirit, and there are varieties of usefulness, service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. And that's from 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. So I want us to start by each of us looking at our own hands. Now notice that you carry the creator's marvelous design in your hands. I mean, these are really high tech things and you have your own fingerprints there um, that they say no one else shares. Um, they have power. You can make them very powerful. They can be gentle. Um, look now on them for the sign of usefulness, signs of usefulness. You might have scars, you might have bumps, you might have messy parts on your hands, you might have damaged parts. Um, I have a fingernail that was split and always shows that split since for 20 years now. So you might have damaged parts. Um, they might be exceptional in some way or might have finely tuned skills that no one else has. I mean, maybe you know how to do welding. Nobody else knows how to do welding. Maybe you know how to knead bread, and not too many people know how to do that. Um, you know, some of our, our hands have specific skills. Maybe um, keeping hooks on the fishing pole. I mean, I cannot do that. Okay. The boys know. Don't ask mom to fix them. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to think, how does the Spirit intend for you to use your hands for the common good? I'll give you a moment to think about that. How 
how can your hands be used for the common good? And then we're going to bless those hands. So I'm going to read some blessing pieces. And you can um, look at your hands while they come um, and just think about the blessings and how that might fit your hands or it might not. All right? So let's begin. Blessed be the work of your hands, O holy God, creator, especially shown by our hands. Blessed be those hands that have touched life. Blessed be those hands that have nurtured creativity. Blessed be hands that have held pain. Blessed be those hands that have held another with passion. Blessed be the hands that have held thermometers, and spatulas, and garden trowels, and steering wheels. Blessed be those hands that have guided machinery and cars. Blessed be hands that have opened in love. Blessed be hands that have closed in anger and held back from him. Blessed be those hands that have planted new seeds. Blessed be hands that have held chalk and markers and pencils and coloring on crayons. Blessed be those hands that have harvested. Blessed be hands that have cleaned and washed and mopped and scrubbed. Blessed be hands that have traveled miles over computer keyboards and piano keyboards, and have danced over strings and have hopped through fingerings. Blessed be hands that have held clubs and rackets and handled balls of every kind. Blessed be hands that are naughty with arthritis and age. Blessed be hands that are wrinkled and scarred. Blessed be hands that have reached out and then received another. Blessed be the hands that have splashed in the renewing waters of baptism. Blessed be the hands that have received the bread and wine, body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed be those hands that Jesus will hold as we walk our final journey to heaven. Now I want you to help someone else receive the sign of the cross on their hands. So I'll slow this down as you work in your group. Blessed be the work of your hands, O Holy One, and now put on the sign of the cross to remember that the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the source of all blessing now and forever. So we all got a chance to put a cross on each other's hands. And now let the people of God say amen. 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 All right. Now, the next hymn talks about hands and feet and voices in silver and gold, and it just expands this giving of and knowing that there's so much of us that is blessed to give and blessed to be useful. Um, let's take my life that I may be. It's number 406 in that green hymnal, and we're singing all the verses. Um.
Sunday mornings, and this happens. Some of you are come for that, and others of you, it, it just it kind of happens. Um, but every Sunday, there's a gathering before worship for learning and listening to all that the Bible teaches. And those who come seek to be transformed in discipleship and transformed for nature. And the Holy Spirit acts among us when we gather to learn. We open ourselves to that process. So our learning year, as you heard, is kicking off with Rally Sunday next week, and it's going to continue all through next May. And then we have summertime for the adults. So we've got some volunteers that come and make sure that that happens. And they um, give their energy, and they give, give their gifts, and their time to be in that ministry. So um, I'm going to invite forward um, those that are doing that for today, it's a lot, a lot of us here. So Amy Kennedy, and she teaches our youngest age group. And then Kim Noyer and Rose McFarland, they take the next group up, but they also, as needed, filter in to help with the younger ones. So basically, among these three, they're doing our elementary, early elementary and elementary. So... Um, and then we have Jerry Trio, who is there for our seniors, and all subs for him as needed. Yeah. All right. Now, those of you who are regularly going to make sure that our adults have a leader, so you guys can come forward too. And I am catechism instructor, so I, that's my role. That's why I have my t-shirt on, too. <laughs> okay. Um, we're all going to join together in committing to this ministry. The Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight to your paths. That's a word of encouragement for us. So, will all of you offer your giftedness to this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help. I will, and I ask God to help. Now, Ephesians 3 says, I pray that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through God's Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. As you are being limited and grounded in love, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's from Paul writing again to another congregation. So. Will you carry out this ministry centered in Christ's call, striving to trust God as your guide and inspiration? And if so, answer, I will and I ask God to help me. I will, I will and I ask God, God to help me. Will you trust in God's care? Seek to grow in love for those you serve. Strive for excellence in your skills and honor the gospel with a faithful life. If so, answer, I will and I ask God to help me. I will and I ask God to help me. Right. The rest of you, I'm going to have you stand and I'm going to have you repeat some things with me. And I'm going to ask you, brothers and sisters of Christ, to gather at St. Paul. Will you today renew your commitment to our youngest brothers and sisters? our children and our youth who are looking to be teachers for guidance and support and examples of righteous living. If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. I'm going to have them face you to get a good look at them. I have another question for you in the congregation. Will you claim these gifted people as those called by God and help and carry out our congregation's ministry to children, youth, families, and adults? Will you support them and enthusiastically celebrate the work they 
them to teach faithfully, lead patiently, and guide confidently. Stir up in me, service the gift of your Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Um, okay, we're going to all offer a blessing to them. Did we print this? Okay. So, we can pretend that you are just like me. I put that hand out for blessing and you can too. Yeah, you know, just a hand to me. We are blessing them. Almighty God, who has given you the gifts and the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. All right. On behalf of St. Paul, I now commission you for ministry, grateful for your gifts and your willingness to serve. And we're going to, we're just going to applaud that we have teachers. So, some of you have taught before. Okay, we are now going to have you guys turn around because you're going to stay here to profess your faith. All right. <laughs> We now all together profess the faith we teach and the story we proclaim in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So let's say together I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in the Spirit. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now you may judge if, um, this is a long stretch standing, so if, if it's not working for you to be standing, go ahead and take your seat. Um, but we're going to continue um, as we stand. As Kevin Grace, we are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for the church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Refresh the hearts of your people, deepen our understanding of every good thing we share, and strengthen our partnership in the faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all its creatures, for all that will yield fruit and grain, for waterways and other bodies of water that will sustain the life of our planet, planet God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations and those in authority, the elected leaders of our towns, states, and country, and for international organizations, grant wisdom to those who govern and raise up citizens who make decisions in the best interest of their neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. Follow me. For those who suffer from disease, for those who struggle with homelessness, a lack of food, and proper health care, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all in this community who need your care. Especially today, we pray for those who are recovering from injury and also from surgery. We pray for Pastor Marty, pray for Barbara Christ, Betty Hawkins, Darlene Strasser, and Peter. We also ask that you be with Anne Sophie as she um, works to return to health. There's so many. Um, in need of healing, in need of hope, I ask that you grant fullness to those who gave in our hearts. God of 
that we glorify your holy name. Bless your people with the strength to live into our many vocations for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who now rest from their labors. Give us faith like them to love you with all our hearts and by your mercy bring us to everlasting life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Share that peace with one another as you are able. You may be seated. We're going to continue after the offering. Thank you. 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. And um, we'll invite our helpers up first, and then we'll start coming up to the table. The blood of Christ shed. The The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ Body of blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, during the name of the human grace and the life of the
Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts at this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, 